The Human Rights Law Centre exists to protect human rights in Australia and also in Australian operations overseas. And we do this using a powerful model of change that involves us working directly with affected communities as well as with law firms and civil society partners to drive real impacts for a fair future. All families belong together, but for years, successive Australian governments have been intentionally separating refugee families as a cruel deterrence measure to try and stop people coming to Australia to seek safety. This was the case for our client Abdullah, who fled the Taliban and sought safety in Australia. He had been trying to bring his wife and children to safety as well. The Australian government intentionally prevented them from reuniting, so we supported our clients to take legal action. The government finally granted the family's visas. So Fatima and the kids were able to travel to Australia and have finally been reunited with Abdullah and they're now rebuilding their lives together in safety. They are just one of thousands of families who are still separated by these unreasonable visa processing delays. We will keep using legal action and advocacy to build a fairer family migration system in Australia. In a perfect world, businesses would respect human rights and the environment wherever they operate. Unfortunately, we know that that's not always the case. Our team at the Human Rights Law Centre aims to ensure that wherever they operate, Australian businesses respect and uphold people's human rights. For the past two years, we've been working with communities around the Panguna mine in Bougainville in Papua New Guinea in relation to massive mine waste pollution that's been left by Rio Tinto's former copper and gold mine there. Communities have been left living with heavily polluted water supplies, with flooding that's caused by mine waste continuing to erode into the rivers, which is destroying people's land and crops um, and their livelihood. We spoke to one woman, for example, recently when we went out there, who had lost her two-year-old daughter after she fell into the river and swallowed some of the river water, which is heavily contaminated with chemicals. These are the kinds of impacts that people are living with on a day-to-day -day basis. We worked with a range of communities to file a human rights complaint against Rio Tinto for these impacts. As a result of that, Rio Tinto came back to the table and has agreed to talk to communities about what can be done to resolve these problems. Over the next two years, we're going to be working with communities to ensure that Rio Tinto takes responsibility for its actions so that communities can live on their land in safety. We should all be able to decide what happens to our bodies and our lives. That's why abortion is a fundamental human right. When access to abortion is denied, women die, their health is imperiled, they're forced to carry pregnancies against their will. Just a few years ago, it was perfectly legal to harass and abuse someone walking up to their doctor's door for reproductive health care. Abortion was also in the criminal laws of most states and territories. So we saw these as two issues that really needed to be addressed. So a really wonderful woman named Susie Allenson, she approached the Human Rights Law Centre and she was really tired of seeing her patients enter the clinic traumatised and distressed. We've worked um, really collaboratively to make sure that safe access zones are in place in every state and territory across Australia to safeguard access to abortion and to make sure that there's funding so that no matter who you are or where you live, you can access the care that you need.